In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome. As we join this morning on this wonderful Easter Sunday morning, as light begins to break out of the darkness from the night, we gather here at Roddenstown Church, this place, our remains of a church that in times of old people would have come together to celebrate in prayer to join together in the unity of faith that we celebrate today. On this most blessed of days, Easter Sunday morning, we come together in prayer. And as you join with us from wherever this morning, we welcome you. And it's great that you can join us. As we gather ourselves together here on this ungodly hour, often called, uh, but not an ungodly hour. And in fact, folklore often tells that on Easter Sunday morning, the sun rises and dances in the sky. It's a reason for jubilation. It's a reason for great joy, for Christ, who is our Savior, taken from among his people, condemned, crucified, and put to death, is buried in the tomb. But the wonder, of course, is that when the tomb is visited on early morning after the Sabbath, Jesus is no longer there. He is risen to new life. New life which we celebrate through light, through water, the water that we receive in baptism, that new life in Jesus Christ the Lord. So we begin this morning with a blessing upon our Easter candle and the water that we have here that we use to commemorate and celebrate our baptism in Jesus Christ. So Lord, bless this candle which shows us the light of your presence, the light of life. May it be for us a beacon of hope, a light that shows us the way from to keep us, that the darkness may never overcome us, but we always have that gift of light in our lives. We pray the blessing upon the water. And I'm moving closer to the fire now, not for heat, it's for light. Um, o God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed the regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to the vice and beginning of virtue. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this water, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil this most sacred day, and for all who recall the wondrous works of our creation, and still the greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you are to enter upon with the human race, and last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our, corrupt, our corrupted nature 
in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the good in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we celebrate that gift of renewal and baptism on this Easter day, we give thanks and glory to God for his presence among us. And so, as we conclude the time of Lent, we return to the praise of God as we recite together uh, that great hymn of, of praise in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we glorify you, we glorify you. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the, renewed, may through the renewal brought about by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all that had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not, on, not by all the people, but only by certain witnesses who God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after the resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I the Lord of Zion. I the Lord of Zion. I have heard my people cry, all is well in my sing. I am a sin. I will make the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, I will live a light 
letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life that you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. This is the word of the Lord. Sequence. Christians, to the paschal victim, offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the lamb, and Christ, the undefiled, hath sinners to his father reconciled. Death with life contented, combat strangely ended. Life's own champion, slain, yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way. That tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels were attesting, shroud with grave cloths resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast then in the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was very early on the first day of the week, and still dark, when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb, and came running to Simon Peter, and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together. But the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. To this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The countryside begins to awaken now with the sounds that we hear in the background. Uh, the stillness of the morning is not interrupted, but in fact enhanced by those sounds which emerge from the surrounding countryside and how it kind of hurls the new morning. It seems to be telling us the story. If something new and wondrous has happened, something that has never happened before. Of course, we know that this is not the case, but yet there is a sense of the newness of the moment and the value that is in it, the mysterious gift that we receive on this blessed morning. Easter is always a time that concludes our waiting. It unfetters and unshackles us from what is our past, the darkness of our past, because it hurls the brightness of the new day, the new life. The horror of what we celebrated through Good Friday the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord is now past. And there is an anticipation. Just like those who come to the tomb of Jesus early morning before daylight dawns, they have an additional moment of horror and loss when they see that the stone has been moved. What more can happen to them? How much more difficult can life become? They have just lost their wondrous friend and Lord, they have to try and deal with that moment and process it. Now, a further loss and damage and destruction in their lives. That's something that is experienced by many in different places through their lives because circumstances remove what is stable and continuous. It removes the stability and protection by something that, for some unknown reason, or sometimes for known reason, is a destructive force. It brings darkness into their lives. It takes away, ultimately, their hope. But as we celebrate our Easter Day, the Christian message is one of great hope. It tells us that we should not lose hope. And, of course, in this year, sadly, once again, our Easter celebration is held in a way that is unfamiliar to us. It's without us joining together in prayer. It's behind closed doors, so to speak. We have to keep that hope alive in a very real and strong way. Let us not allow this time of pandemic and restriction to remove that hopefulness of our lives that we receive, that gift that is given to us at Easter time. New things will come. New hopes emerge, just as in, this, in these moments the light breaks through. Uh, we can see around about what is our environment, our surrounds. It becomes familiar to us. I think that celebration of the Mass at dawn is, of course, that emergence from darkness into the light of day uh, to restore hopefulness and stability, familiarity that we can find our way through, we can see where we are going, the steps we make, the steps forward, the steps together. So may this Easter day 
fulfill the promise for all of us. Uh, bring us that gift of what we would cherish in our hearts. And despite the fact that on this Easter, again, we may be a little uh, less able to celebrate the fulfilling of our usual plans and the things we would often and always look forward to. Despite that little loss, let us bring the fullness of the gift of God's joy into our lives and into each other's lives, offering those wishes of peace and hope, of gladness and joy that Easter brings to us. It is the certainty of the message. Christ is alive, he is with us. Let us celebrate with joy and gladness. Let us receive the fullness of his life into our hearts and go forward with that message of hope, with a song that cries out, Alleluia, he is risen, he is alive. And the Easter message which we proclaim in the church through the masses in the next number of weeks, proclaim that message, enriched with hope, enlivened with the presence of Christ, our Saviour and Lord. So may those blessings be with you wherever you are today and however you are. We pray that it brings you good things, brings you peace and brings you uh, the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, his abiding gift of joy and new life. So we welcome the Easter day. We give thanks to God as the light breaks upon us this blessed day. Together, we celebrate the gift we receive. So we now offer our prayers, our many prayers, uh, to the Lord who hears us and watches over us. And as we are enlivened by the joy of Easter, and with confidence we turn to our Heavenly Father, offering our petitions this day. For the Church, that we may radiate the light of Christ each day and confidently live as daughters and sons of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the baptized, that Christ will pour out the Spirit upon us and enable us to continue the mission of bringing hope, meaning, and love to our society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are suffering, that the risen Lord will bring hope, safety, and new opportunities to the poor, the unemployed, refugees, and immigrants. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are ill, that Christ will heal the sick, strengthen, give strength to those facing an extended recovery, and deliver the human family from the coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are alone or isolated, that the joy of Christ's resurrection will renew their spirits, and that they may find strength in God's abiding presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are grieving, that God will give them peace and hope as they hear the good news of Christ's resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we include our own special intentions now offered in our Mass today. Lord, hear us. For all who have died, in our Mass this morning, we especially remember Paul Gahan, Elizabeth Betty Morris, Jackie Moran, Maeve Murphy, Dermot Shaw, whose anniversaries are around this time. We pray for those who have died through violence or those who have been victims of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and all are departed, that Christ may welcome them into the eternal light and joy of God's presence. Lord, hear us. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. Bless us, Father, with the assurance of your Son's risen presence in our lives. For Jesus is our Lord, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, Exultant with paschal gladness, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying, he has destroyed our life, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, holy. holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy deeds gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, said the blessing, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in unity and in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so with joy, praise and hope, we pray to our Heavenly Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and the tomb was empty. It's empty not because we, lo- we took him out, but because God called him into new, triumphant, risen life. Jesus is alive. We don't expect much change in a tomb, only that the body will rot and disintegrate. A place that is cold, empty, fearful. We don't think of it as a place of life, yet in the tomb Jesus was called. From coldness of death to the warmth of new life, from the emptiness of death to the fullness of new consolation, from the dread of nothingness to the confidence of new mission. The clothes left behind, rolled up, never to be used again. For life is new, and on a new day, we wear new clothes. The clothes of death give way to the bright colors of resurrection, and injustice gives way to care and compassion, heart and violence to reconciliation. The hand of friendship is stretched out to another, and people just try to make it together. Old clothes no longer needed, anger's long smouldering put out, with new hope, new life, a new vision of God. And fears once crippling new life evaporate into confidence. The wearers are raised to new life, new love, and work for God. For the tomb of Jesus is the place of light, and the tomb of Jesus is the space of of eternity. Let us pray. O God, look upon your church with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the Resurrection, Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our Mass this morning, we wish to remember especially Paul Gahan, uh, Betty Morris, Jackie Moran, Maeve Murphy and Dermot Shaw, whose anniversaries are around this time. And we will pray also for the repose of the soul of Teresa Marmion of Trim, the mother of Patricia Carty, who died during the past week. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. As a... The daylight fills the sky and the place that we're in here in Roddenstown this morning. Um, just have you know, it's still very cold, but we managed and we did well. Uh, we were thinking of you at home in your warm beds. And uh, now that you're watching and joining in with us, uh, it's a great celebration. And uh, first of all, I wish to say a very special thanks to our setup team, uh, producers and directors and creators and designers and musicians and readers. Uh, it takes a lot of work to organize all this at the uh, the darkness of the hour this morning, but it was worth it, and uh, it's been a beautiful celebration, and we hope that you enjoyed it, to be joined with us um, from this special place on the special day, and of course to wish you all a very happy and joyful Easter. Uh, whatever you do today, may it be filled with the special blessing of today. It is a wonderful time, a great festival, and we pray and wish you every good wish and blessing. Um, we blessed the water this morning at the beginning of Mass, as you remember, and there will be containers of water left at the church in Kitloon and Batterstown if you wish to come and uh, receive those there, so they'll be for you to take um, safely and uh, for your home to have the blessing of Easter to share with you. So I think that's uh, pretty much all that we have to say. We conclude with a special blessing on this Easter day and... um, Thanks to our background chorus of the bards uh, singing in with us this morning to make it all the more special at this time of the beautiful time of spring. Hopefully the, the frost disappears and we, we um, get some nicer and pleasant spring days. So we pray a special blessing to conclude our Easter 
celebration mass today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through the today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Easter feast come with Christ's help, exulting in spirit, to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Because he lives, I can't